We've done a fair amount of research over the last several years about the cognitive psychology behind how people best absorb information visually and into the discipline of data visualization in an attempt to help our users become better at creating visuals in one pager. Although our own education is ongoing, today we're going to take a moment to summarize what we've learned to date. There is also enough content here that we'll have to split the video into two parts, this being part one. We're going to pause as we go to reference authors and experts so that you can continue your education on your own, if you like. First, we'd like to take a moment to state that data visualization in planning is, in fact, a discipline. Historically, we've simply gone ahead and created our planned communications based off of our accumulated experience and or what our audience demands. But in either case, the request or the result is probably not based on any level of data visualization expertise. This means that it's very likely that you and your audience might be creating less effective visuals. To be honest though, you're not going to have to get a master's in data visualization in order to be a better communicator. The handful of items we'll talk about will improve your visuals, your communications design process, and your business more broadly. Let's talk about the fun stuff first, and then circle back around on process. If you subscribe to our blog, you may have read about Edward Tufta, a retired professor at Yale who authored six major books and many articles about what he called the search for graphical excellence. Two of our favorite terms from Tufta are data ink and chart junk. Data ink refers to the ink in your visual that is specifically representing your data. Chart junk is essentially the rest of the ink, the stuff in your chart that can be eliminated without removing the data and information the audience needs. While Tufta attempts to identify the ideal data ink ratio, for the purposes of improving Gantt charts, you simply need to do your best to provide the right balance of data ink and eliminate chart junk. Let's take this example. How might we cut down on our chart junk and find the right balance of data ink? We could eliminate the zebra stripes, which frankly are one of the absolute worst and most prevalent examples of chart junk we see. The zebra striping has no purpose, other than to quote, make it pretty, which has nothing to do with reporting data. We could also eliminate these row borders, since the separation happens naturally between the Gantt bars. Again, chart junk. I can also eliminate my footer, and the grid lines for the quarters, which don't help me absorb the data. Chart junk. I'm also going to change the fill on my shapes to be a flat fill to reduce the noise created by the gradient. I can also now begin to thin the herd a little bit by reducing the size of the Gantt bars and softening the remaining borders. There. That's not too bad. In an ideal scenario, you'll want to eliminate chart junk altogether and balance your data ink. You want enough data ink to present the data and information, no more, no less. Now let's talk about pre-attentive attributes, which are visual clues that tell our brains where to look. Cole nussbaumer nafluk a more current data visualization expert, discusses pre-attentive attributes in her useful book, Storytelling with Data. As you can see from the chart in front of you, there are many visual or textual attributes that one might use to draw an audience member's attention to a certain place. If you work to master these attributes, you can use them to create hierarchies in your visuals to essentially tell a story as the consumer's eyes are drawn from one attribute to the next in a deliberate sequence. Spatial vertical grouping using swim lanes in a Gantt chart is the most obvious attribute and one that should be included at the top of the hierarchy. One word of caution though, that using too many attributes or having too many unique values of a single attribute to illustrate many different data points will result in our brain wanting to consume the visual as an aggregate. Meaning it will be very difficult for us to extract each subset of data because there is too much diversity in front of us to absorb each group individually. Take the below example where I'm using color for fill to illustrate percent complete as a border and for a gradient fill. It's just too much and will take a lot of study for me to figure out what I'm looking at. Some rules of thumb that we use are don't attempt to subgroup things beyond the swim lanes and secondarily with color. If you need a third dimension, use different shapes. All of these are something you can automate using swim lane grouping or conditional formatting in one pager. 
We have separate videos for each of those in our support portal. For colors, the experts say that seven or eight is all our brains can consume at once before the visual becomes a composite, and this is probably equally true for any attribute. You can use other attributes on an exception basis, but make sure you limit them. In this example, you see that I've used a border to call out these two shapes in a different way. But if I give everything a different border, it will get very confusing. If you need to really make something pop, leverage the von Restorf or isolation effect, which is to provide emphasis on the most important thing. The experts like color for this and suggest a combination of grays and blue for the data you need at the top of the hierarchy, like you see in the example here. You'll have to practice pre-attentive attributes on your own and with your colleagues and obviously get your audience's opinion to find what works best for you. Lastly, let's talk about simplicity specifically and its importance in communications. Scott Baranato, another data visualization expert in his recent book, Good Charts, suggests that simplicity is courageous. We love that. And it's because it's true in such an obvious way after it gets pointed out to you. In my own experience as a project manager, everyone was always trying to one-up and wow one another by creating more exotic and complex representations of their plans. This was either a natural instinct or a circumstantial consequence accidentally fostered by my leadership. It's understandable given our natural urge to impress. You've never heard of an executive asking for a very simple chart, but when you think about it a little bit, you realize that the charts your audience can read at a glance are actually the best charts. It's the most obvious indicator of effectiveness in your communications. If your readers have to take the time to learn how to read the chart before they can actually absorb the information and then have to somehow pick apart all the little pieces to digest it, you've done them a disservice as the communicator. Baronado discusses something called Bray's Paradox, which he says is, and I quote, a principle of traffic management, which states that adding route options, like new roads, new lanes, to congested roadways can actually decrease traffic performance. Relating this to visuals, he says, the thing about having options is that it slows us down. You get what he's saying there, and you've likely lived it. The more you have to look at and absorb on a single page, the more it's going to slow you down. To begin to simplify your visuals, we'll take a bit of culture shift, and to bring about that change, we'll take, you guessed it, courage. If you suggest to your leadership that you'd like to begin to create some more simple alternatives to allow you to communicate to them more effectively, they might actually listen. Some might even breathe a sigh of relief after not having the guts to tell you they've had a hard time consuming the visuals you've been creating previously. In the end, if you can communicate more simply, everyone should be more informed, rather than getting weighed down by any complexities. Please visit our other videos at onepager.com forward slash support, or send us your questions at support at onepager.com and we'll be happy to assist you.